you know, this universe and stuff. So left and right is like very arbitrary. There's no point in talking about it. So instead, there's just these uh, statements. Wait, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyone can, when I talk, anyone can interrupt me. Yeah, if you have a question. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, but Chad, the Galba won't let us. <laughs> uh, it's fine, I'm talking, you can use my time. I want to do there, is, there is some flexibility, but there is already some people trying to speak. Uh, so there's now a question here, but I will pass the word on to you. Okay. Um, but do, do you have like a direct question? Like, yeah, it was comments. just a, again a comment that uh, how would you uh, understand the uh, societal structure instead? I mean, how would you define it? As, for example, just a status quo and then social change or something like that? You know, power structure, power relations? I think like at the end of the day, there's probably like what you guys are referring to the right is like probably you know, a few hundred people that's kind of in charge of this whole thing. So, and there's a lot of good people that I know are very conservative when it comes to monetary and fiscal policies. So I have nothing against that. Uh, it just when you start saying left and right, it kind of creates a divisiveness. I'm also really interested in, in this sort of thing that we work with in the project um, the people rather every the activist and the inspiration and this might be stepping a bit close to some of you but for example people like yourself like you Alex what, mm -hmm. yeah. what, what for example inspires you to, uh, to be in Copenhagen and build boats out of garbage is that a question? Or? yeah <laughs> and what, what, where, does, where does that come from? Um, you, 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 I don't think you, you sort of included that in the presentation, but I obviously, kinda, yeah, uh, as people inspired to, to do something. Hmm. So it kind of came uh, through, uh, I was just traveling a lot, living off just my backpack, and I came back to Copenhagen and I was actually just homeless, and uh, <laughs> I checked out the project, and then all these things started, you know, the cogs started turning, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I've always been so, you know, anti-capitalist and stuff, but that really, uh, I've never been in a group that gave me the tools I needed to do, you know. So how would you find it? Work away? Yeah. Show up one day and... Yeah. And then maybe other examples, like, archive people, or just, like, where does your inspiration come from? Yeah, thanks, indeed. I think often that can't be plan, planned out. I mean, for example, we just discovered something that somehow needed or was in need of our attention. So I would say that to organize stuff in itself, I mean, can, can perhaps often have the effect of preventing, uh, preventing uh, private initiatives. I don't know. It's a uh, complex yes. question. Yeah, we also get a lot of inspiration from uh, creating our own fictional narratives. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's actually a, um, a major point for us that, um, that sometimes when, uh, while we are producing our small works or just discussing what we're, what we're doing uh, when we think, okay, could we say that there is uh, an international movement of archivists where the roots, where archival frontier is the frontier of this whole mass of people. Um, so actually creating a, a in our heads, but as part of the working process, um, thinking on a global scale that this could exist and now it exists for us because we keep mentioning it and <laughs> telling people that now this is the case. Um, we read a lot of uh, works from uh, pacifistic writers, uh, this lustful science, the science of possibilities, like Alfred Chéry, or uh, we, we read a lot of William Burroughs, and then we try to, to implement it into our daily lives. Uh, but maybe that's because our our goals are more artistic than, than narrowly political. 
you seem to be wanting to do just a short question. Yeah, so just a short question. Um, the way that you're describing things, um, do you sometimes feel like you are have the power to write history? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <That's sweet. laughs> um, you you're not a detective, so maybe you want to jump in on what um, you were answering to that. I, I was. It was just an answer to this actually. Oh, how people get interested in these kind of initiatives and projects. Yeah, inspired. Yeah, um, but it's not to generalize people, but but often it's the same kind of people. Like you know, if you already know work away or woofing, and then you get into it, and and networking is cool and everything. And yeah, but then you have some friends who you already know is interested in it. So maybe it would be. Well, I was just thinking about um, the groups who are dealing with the sharing food. Um, it's really nice that you have these areas where you can go to uh, spaces, but also in in some way it's uh, it would be even nicer, of course, if if it could if it could be spread out to the people who don't already know about these kind of things, who don't know <laughs> that you have um, MacVagel or that you have work away or woofing or that where you can uh, go to a floating city. Um, I don't know how you can well, it it shouldn't be a form of entertaining people, but maybe you could, um, I don't know, you said that a lot of food is wasted in the household. And then instead of just having this area where you can go and share food, maybe you could go out to schools and teach people how to uh, make leftovers more interesting. Often people just don't know these things. Or maybe with the floating boats, I don't know, you could sail into a Swimming, swimming pool, <laughs> and then, yeah, people uh, like would get interested in this. Yeah, but yeah, without, um, yeah, it shouldn't be a form of entertainment. I don't know how you could, but yeah, just it's a shame that it's people know about it, but because they already, uh, they already already interested through work away, or, yeah, something like that. Okay, it would be good to get it to the masses. Uh, the interventions who were made uh, drove the discussion quite far away, but I would like to <laughs> return to the four <laughs> persons who now have uh, uh, asked to speak. And uh, it's now my... Um, I think, uh, following up on Tina's comments, I'm, ex I'm, ex I'm following the Democracy Collaborative, and so if I were to recommend something to follow based on a U.S. political <coughs> spectrum, I think they're doing a lot of work, good work, and putting out a lot of interesting things. So it's kind of led by a guy named Gus Beth. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited about that, and that gives me uh, hope and forward-looking feelings about politics in the United States. Uh, but also maybe on uh, thinking across different political ideologies, maybe also this ties into what you were talking about, about bringing things, projects to other people. I think maybe this, Trump, this Sanders versus Trump, the people who are worried about these things, I don't think their core concerns are that different. I think that they're middle class. Oh, I just can't yeah. hear you. Sorry. Just a little okay. bit louder. Sorry. I think that the people that in the United States, these two political, they're different in terms of maybe some of their core worries, but I think their, their core fears are similar. Yeah. Um, so I think that, that even looking at, I can, I can sympathize if I try if, I, if, I, if I'm clear-headed, I can sympathize with a Trump voter on an economic issue, uh, and uh, not uh, uh, racism, but, but on, an economic, <laughs> on, a, on an economic level, I can, I can feel, I can, I can, I can find that, that mind space. Um, and so anyway, that's, that's, that's sometimes hard. But anyway. Yeah, 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 I get it's hard, but I, yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm just fine with that. Okay, Christian? Yeah. I think I also want to build on some of the things that are being said. Um, one thing that I find is interesting when I started to, or when we started to work with this whole change system and yeah, the systemic stuff, is that you actually find like a, a pretty much also connecting to your idea of like okay, left, right. This is actually maybe it's, it's not really the good place to start at least uh, because when you look at it, it's actually people. It's somehow people or humans working in these systems and in these offices and it's all very described and they're very kind of fixed in their boxes. But what we also start to see is that uh, a lot of these people also want to do alternative things to, to create actually change, but they really, really lack the options or the, 
they don't see the alternative. So there are also, there's a lot of people that when, if you reach out or we try to change the sort of idea that we actually need to help them with, with things, you know, so that, for instance, with the refugees here in Denmark, they, you know, there's a big problem. The society is not handling it very well. And then you see these autonomous people starting to create projects where they take care of refugees coming in, Syrians, and creating neighborhood meetings and all these things. And then afterwards, the sort of the government get inspired by that and starts to support it. So there's some kind of a, a positive loop that sh should be sort of used there. Um, and I also like to think about the, um, what you said about the welfare state, because one thing is capitalism and then is it the political <laughs> system. And then there's also this whole idea of we're actually creating a, a welfare state. And um, I guess this is also where we need more positive idea as a, actually positive examples of how you can actually do it because then it's not a longer a, a discussion of where to cut money in the education system but we're actually creating initiatives that say this is important in, in, in education we can do it this way so it's always being really practical being really like exemplifying stuff and the last thing i would like to add is also what we're not talking or another thing is also the media idea because it's, it's, it's really connected to this the stories that we hear about welfare systems the story that we're telling about our societies and this is where information society also gets really really interesting because suddenly there's hundreds of thousands of stories that are pointing in all kinds of directions and telling everything differently so how do you also navigate in this kind of and of course there's power hierarchies in media also telling us about like Russia is the enemy uh, capitalism <laughs> is shit so Somehow, this our, our our society is really connected about this uh, of the freedom of information. Also, like uh, how how good is our information, and, and yeah. how does it help us to connect between these things to help us actually create these autonomous solu uh, alternatives? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you want a response to that? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm throwing it out there. Maybe somebody <laughs> wants to build on their perspective. <laughs> if somebody has a good idea. Yeah, uh, I don't know if Edward is around. This whole time. Okay. Yeah, then we'll pass to the next person, which is Asker. Is it me? That was not purpose, I guess. Yeah. Um, but you can say something anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. I can make something up. Um, <laughs> I can respond to, uh, <laughs> to the question I, I got uh, when I stopped talking the last time. <laughs> we thought that we were writing history. Um, uh, because I think that as historians of ideas, that we are at the same time as we are archivists, um, we are constantly aware that um, every quaint political structure, every quaint narrative um, is reproduced all the time in not just in the media but in schools in the education system and that um, everyone is being governed to think within certain ways. For example, the political left in the 70s is often ridiculed or said that they were dogmatics. Um, and uh, one thing that we try to, to break up is the one-sided, simple narrative. Um, because they should be, sometimes we can be, <laughs> the political left in the 70s, they can be completely ignorant and very, very weird and uh, um, paternalistic. They were also really engaged and, and lovely at the same time. I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand. Just like, could you say a little bit more? I just I lost it about the paternalistic and it just clear. Ah, yeah. Um, just that we have all these images about what um, the left has been and. Uh, how political movements evolved, or did they win, or did they lose. Okay. Uh, and those narratives can always be reformulated, quite simply, because they're always com complex and nuanced. 
Uh, you're talking about like histories, like I'm just trying to understand more like histories written it by. It can be history and it can be contemporary issues. Um, okay. But you can always. Yeah, but, but what's the point again? You, you have to interpret somehow. So what's going to be your approach? In it? Yeah. You have to interpret the. Yeah, 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 yeah but I, I mean, you. do it in another way. Uh, I guess you're also addressing, like, um, the point is also the flexibility that is always inherent in, in, his, in contemporary or historical uh, material. And, and that it can be mobilized also in order to create a pluralistic or flexible history rather than only, rather than a, a single grand narrative. And perhaps the goal for a new movement uh, towards autonomy shouldn't be to create a, a great grand collective uh, narrative, but perhaps rather a a uh, common understanding about about the possibilities of <laughs> of a multiplicity of narratives or a field of possible narratives. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Cool. Thanks. Thanks.